Today's session, on behalf of everyone at RevIO, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I'm Delaney Dabkowski, RevIO Senior Marketing Manager. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, audio will automatically come in through your speakers. Second, a recorded version of this webinar will be emailed to you within two days. Third, we'll be having a Q&A session at the end of the event so please submit your questions via the Zoom control panel at any point during the live presentation. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Today, Jamie Rodden, VP of Channel Development and Forrest Air, President at Altaworks, will be discussing how to maximize your mobility margin. Jamie is the VP of Channel Development at, with Altaworks. She entered the telecom field in 2001 as a project manager for carrier services with the Bell South Solution Provider. Jamie joined Ricky Ritchie in 2003 to form AltaWorks to provide premise-based VoIP telephone systems and carrier services as a Bell South Master Solution Provider. Today, AltaWorks is an ITSP and reseller of Tier 1 carrier solutions with customers in 40 U.S. states Canada and Mexico. In 2013, AltaWorks added AT&T Control Center IoT connectivity to the company's offerings and Jamie became the director of IoT. In 2016, Jamie was asked to be a guest speaker on IoT connectivity for channel partners in Washington, DC. Her varied skills and years of experience make her a true asset to the team and leader in the industry. In 2012, Jamie relocated to Fairhope, Alabama, where she now resides with her family. When not working, Jamie is very involved with the activities of her four music and sports-minded children, Brianna, Savannah, Blaine, and Danielle. Forrest started his career in technology at a local office furniture and supply company in shipping and receiving. After a short period, he moved into the IT department where he gained his first experience in building and managing a corporate network. Over time, he was given more responsibility and eventually rose to VP of operations, managing a staff of 30 people. Throughout his tenure at the office furniture company, he was responsible for purchasing decisions around wired connections, mobile connections, and asset tracking. After doing business with AltaWorks as a customer for many years, he decided to make a change and join AltaWorks as Director of Technology and Marketing, where he designed and implemented their technology expansion into two cloud-based data centers. He has also held positions at v as VP of Finance and EVP before his current role as President of AltaWorks. He enjoys working with team members to build processes and execute a vision for success that includes technology. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jamie and Forrest. Well, thank you, Delaney. That was a great introduction. What we're going to talk about today is how do carriers make money? Um, when you uh, buying data from you know big carrier like Verizon or AT and T, you're buying and betting on a rate plan, and they've designed it that way. So you either don't buy enough data, or you pay overage or buy too much. Either way, you're going to lose. So what we're going to talk about today is is what are the ways that you as a reseller can make money. So to start off, let's talk about what is breakage, Jamie. So breakage is a difference between what you purchase in the form of data and it what, what you actually utilize. So you can either buy too much or too little. Right. So that's the, the difference. The difference is the, what's in the middle. So where can you make money on breakage? So really anytime you can stack rate plans, um, do pooling across rate plans, or even within rate plan families. Um, depending on the platform, you have the ability to make breakage. Gotcha. So what does it mean to be in the mobility space? You mentioned mobility, and we've been talking about mobility and IoT. What's the difference? Yeah, so mobility and IoT are, are the same but different. So it, a lot of that depends on the way that the data is managed mm -hmm. and the way that you can purchase it. So a lot of the growth that we're seeing in cellular data is in the IoT space, but mobility is the traditional space where we see um, smartphones, tablets, hotspots, so things that we use as consumers. Okay, interesting. So there are differences between mobility and IoT. Definitely. It's, it's how you purchase the data. <clears throat> Do you find in the industry when you're talking to people that they know a lot about IoT or even know about IoT? No, not really. Okay. 
a lot of people think, just think cellular data is cellular data. So understanding the differences between the two can really give you an edge. Okay. So with IoT rate plans, do they come in smaller buckets than mobility? Because when I think about mobility, I'm thinking about you know a five gig plan, ten gig plan, whatever. Yeah, they do. Um, so overall, if you're buying in smaller buckets, smaller rate plans, then you're going to have a lower cost. Gotcha. Okay. So what's the difference between taxation uh, when you're talking about mobility and IoT? So it really depends on what you're doing with the data okay. and where you're sending the data. So there are some gray areas, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're sending anything over a private network, so like GPS tracking, for right. instance, that would be a taxable item. Right. If you're just going to the internet, maybe you can get to Google, then it might be taxed. Right. And so um, it's really important to understand your use case and how that data is flowing and work with your compliance team. Right. And I've heard it said that it's more or less how you sell it, not necessarily what you're buying. So as a Absolutely. as a reseller, you can buy it one way, but depending on how you sell it, that can change the taxation Absolutely. implication. All right. So what's the different platforms that are used for both mobility and IoT? You know, what are the advantages of these platforms? Yeah, so they vary greatly. Mm -hmm. So mobility, you know, depending on your carrier, you've got postpaid, you've got uh, prepaid, and then you've got um, with postpaid, which is what resellers typically are in the business of, is um, postpaid, you've got proration on your data mm -hmm. and on your billing. IoT space, you've got platforms like Cisco, Ericsson, ThingSpace, and there may or may not be proration for your data and usage billing. Sounds on those. complex. It's a little complicated. Yeah. So how do you make money on breakage then if it's, it's that complex? Yeah, you you really have to understand how everything works together. Mm -hmm. You have to understand your carrier's billing and how they bill you, your contract with them, how they're going to prorate, how they're going to delineate those different plans. Mm -hmm. Understand it. Okay. So what do you see in the marketplace on how resellers are currently selling mobility and IoT rate plans? We're talking about breakage, but what are you seeing people do when you typically talk to them? Yeah, so this is where we started out as well. Yeah. We took the rate plan and we marked it up and we went to market. The problem was is we weren't competitive. Right. So we had to come up with another way to manage the data so that we could be competitive uh, with the tier one carriers. Gotcha. So talking about carriers and being competitive, can you negotiate rate plans with the carriers? You can. You can. We've seen a lot of success taking those individual use cases mm -hmm. and applications to the carriers and saying, hey, guys, this is where we need to be. This is what we're doing with this particular use case. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the volume and the data usage, we can get some really aggressive pricing. So now it comes into play is like how many rate plans do you need when you're negotiating? Yeah, it depends on how many use cases you have. So you've got <laughs> right. so you may have GPS tracking, which does you know 30 second ping, mm -hmm. which will end up being like five megs a month. Right. But then you've got like LTE failover, and that is you know their keep a lot is 49 megs a month. Mm -hmm. But then you have the ability to go up to you know 40 gigs in that same month. So you've got to have some flexibility. Um, but we're seeing some people have one or two rate plans, others have 20. Really? That's crazy. <clears throat> so is it harder uh, to manage more rate plans? As you get into more rate plans, it sounds like it's more complex. It is. Okay. Uh, it's definitely more complex, but there's a significant payoff right. if it's done correctly. Yeah, you can make yep. more money uh, with the breakage. So, so <clears throat> speaking of uh, SIMs and, and rate plans and uh, in the IoT space, are there SIMs that uh, can be set up for auto activation? Yeah, so with the Cisco platform, you have some test data mm -hmm. that comes on every one of those SIMs. It's like 20 kilobytes. I think it varies. Yeah. But um, yeah, once those are in test ready status, that 20 kilobytes is used and it automatically goes to activation ready. So you don't have to actually activate the SIM manually. You can send it out right. and it'll start billing you and you can start billing your customer once they start using it. Exactly. Okay. 
<clears throat> so uh, that's in the IoT space. What about mobility? Can you get test-ready sims in the mobility space? Well, they don't like to do that. Okay. <laughs> so you can. Right. As a reseller, you should have the ability to have cold sims mm -hmm. so that you have stock. Right. But you have to... Again, you've, you've got to know your carrier contract and you have to understand the ins and outs of what that means because there's some limitations, um, especially in the mobility space. You've yeah. got that like 60 to 90 days. You may have a clause in there that says we're going to activate at 60 days or 90 days. Whether you want to or not. Yeah. Whether you've got a SIM in the field or it's sitting in a drawer somewhere. Right. So it sounds like it's more complex on the mobility side. It sounds like yeah. IT, IoT has more flexibility than Absolutely does. Side. So is there such thing, you know, speaking of rate plans, is there such thing as a zero usage plan? There is. We learn this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a zero kilowatt plan is a really interesting way to negotiate with your carrier and mm -hmm. to be able to lower your cost overall. Mm -hmm. So it's great for if you have uh, SIM cards and devices that are shipping from overseas mm -hmm. and you've got a lag time before they're turned up mm -hmm. and then you want them billing, but also uh, great for manufacturing yeah. or, you you know, you have a tractor that you've got a, a SIM in and it goes in for maintenance. Yeah. And then it's going to sit there for a month or so. Then you don't have to pay for any data yeah. on that one. No, that makes sense. Seasonality. So, yeah. <clears throat> so talk about pooling. Uh, you mentioned pooling earlier. With pooling, how does that work with different carrier platforms? That is a big question. Okay. Um, there's all types of pooling. So you've got pooling with like rate plans only. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you've got 20 rate plans. Mm -hmm. You've got a 5 meg, it only pools with other 5 megs. You've got a 10 gig, it only pools with other 10 gigs. Mm -hmm. So you have to be strategic about the way that those are pooling together. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got other rate plans that it doesn't matter what it is. Um, you can have any kind of allotment that you want. And all the pooling for that particular carrier can pull together. Okay. Um, but then you've also got in that mobility space rate plan families. So you can have 15 rate plans yeah. in a rate plan family that can all pull together. Right. Or it can be a specific device type only that will pull together. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> a lot to think about. So how can you use carrier pooling to your advantage? I mean, it's obviously complex, but how can you use it to your advantage? Yeah, really the first step, and, the, and I guess I've said this a couple of times now, but it's just understanding your carrier rate plans and your contracts and how you were going to be billed. And they don't make it easy. Yeah. Uh, but that is really one of your most valuable assets in being able to compete in the space and to service your customers effectively. Well, they're trying to make money on breakage off of you as That's a right. retailer. So, That's right. yeah. Makes sense. So I've heard that AT&T offers advanced features for their clients where they can actually manage your usage billing on your behalf. So they can manage your rate plans. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I don't like it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just, it's, do I want the people that I'm buying from to manage my overall spend? Right. And are they gonna have my best interest and the lowest pricing you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, we've been in the business in telecom for 20 years, and we spend a lot of time doing bill audits, managing yeah. disputes. And um, I think that it... They don't necessarily have your best interest at in They heart. They don't. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so how can you position your solution in a way that's beneficial to you and your end customer? I think just understanding the carrier right plans and the mm -hmm. platform and how they work together. So what are some prevalent use cases you've seen for mobility and IoT data? Because we've been talking about both, but you can use different carriers for different uh, solutions. So what are the solutions that you've seen out there? Um, LTE failover is big for us because mm -hmm. we use it to protect our voice. Yeah. So that's a really good use case that we've seen a lot of traction with. But, you know, we have got... Um, Collars for horses that detect biomedic uh, information on when a horse is going to is in distress or before it has colic symptoms. Um, we have scooter companies that we see a lot, the bikes, the e-bikes. Yeah. Um, but people are using IoT in RV park party venues. Mm -hmm. 
Um, oil and gas is, is really big in sensors. Um, and then temperature controls. Yeah. Um, you know, maintaining temperature controls either in trucks when food is shipping or in grocery stores right. is also another big area. Well, it's wide open. There's tons of opportunities, and it's it's only growing. And I think, you know, in closing, you know, the carriers are making money on breakage. That's how they're making money. So how can you position your company to learn the tips and tricks and the strategies to make money on breakage yourself? So uh, that's the, uh, the way to look at it and look at your business. Look at, don't be scared of mobility or IoT, but uh, understand that there are ways that you can make money on breakage. You don't just have to mark up rate plans. And I, I want to go back and say for us, just remembering that you don't have to sell it the way that you buy it. Yes, that's a good point. Is a great point. Yeah. And and just taking that into consideration when you're building out your customer rate plan. Yeah. All right. I think we're at a point for uh, questions. All right, Jamie and Forrest, thank you guys for your time. Before we begin the Q&A portion of the presentation, I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today and review a few housekeeping items. The first reminder is that we're always interested in topics that you'd like to learn more about, so please submit your topic ideas in the Q&A box. In addition, the full webinar recording will be emailed to you in two days. Lastly, if you've submitted any questions during the presentation that don't get addressed in the live Q&A, we will be following up with you individually via email. Now I'd like to ask a few questions from our audience. We have a telecom expense management company that monitors our invoices to keep us from paying overage. Is this considered breakage? No, I wouldn't consider that breakage. Uh, T TIM companies have a little bit of a different strategy. Um, so they're trying to keep you from paying overage charges by increasing your rate plan so that you get um, larger buckets of data, larger buckets of data for <laughs> a smaller amount of money. But this really doesn't address you know, the issue of being able to optimize your buying power with the carrier. How do you manage the multiple carrier relationships and the different systems and billing cycles? So, we use an operational management platform that pulls everything together for us for all of our different carriers. And we're able to build out customized rate plans for whatever we decide we need to sell for our customers' uh, use cases. Um, it also does uh, the data usage rating and um, you know, puts all of that in one place for easy access for the customers. But I will say that's probably one of the most complex pieces of the mobility because you've got different carrier bill cycles, you've got different customer bill cycles, and trying to marry all those up and get all the billing done correctly is a challenge. So Very much. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. And are you able to extend visibility to your end customers in the portal? Yes. So the platform that we're using is multi-tenanted. So we're able to extend access and visibility to our clients, set up notifications for them, um, just like they would if they were buying from the big carriers. They can still get those same notifications, but they do have that insight into what they're utilizing, um, wherever they are in their billing cycle in the month, and then there's reporting um, on that as well. As an AT&T partner, we get daily downloads from AT&T of da data use. Does Verizon offer a similar service? Yes, they do. Um, in that platform, we use the APIs. So we're getting FTP reports in some cases, um, movie reports, and Verizon is um, API yeah, call API. In, into ThinkSafe. Awesome. Well, we'll wait a second. If anybody else does have any more questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box.
All right. Well, it looks like those are all the questions that we have for today. Uh, Jamie and Forrest, thank you guys so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.